Hello and welcome back to another base build. This video is going to showcase the base I used when I was being raided 1v14. That defense was over 2 months ago and I made a lot of changes. And now I can finally present to you the Mighty Might. The base is designed for smaller groups, 1 to 4 to be specific. It's designed for people who want a base for online raids. Only downside of the base is that it's quite expensive. But for what the base has to offer, the cost is nothing, and it's definitely manageable as a solo if you put the work in. You can now see the build cost and the upkeep for the final stage of the base. Most structures upgraded to either metal or high quality metal and all deployables placed. The Mighty Might has a 2x2 center with an open core on top. The two turrets in the open core which are located behind car ramps makes it incredibly hard for raiders to take control over the core. And yes, the turrets are a total of 9 HV rockets each to shoot out. I've been raided in this base multiple times and every time I've been raided the raiders have gone for the 2x2 on the ground floor where I never store any of my valuable loot. Even though this base is designed for online raids, I managed to defend a 124 rocket raid in this as a solo. But sadly, it never became a video due to a bunch of hackers. Now, let's get into the base build. You wanna start off the base? Just a simple 2x2. Two two. No airlock. Just a simple 2x2. Two two. Important thing though, you have to leave this wood. You will be soft siding that later. Just add a shelf like that. Add a door. Add a door there and... Uh, boom. You have an airlock. Really simple stuff. I'm not going to show all the boxes and all that. Because it's quite self-explanatory, like, where you're supposed to place the boxes, and I don't want to waste your time and mine. So, we, we keep it simple today. Make the second floor extremely simple here as well. Just look what I'm doing. I don't feel like I have to say too much about it. It's pretty, pretty easy to see what's going on. And then you just wanna put on some more doors. I do recommend keeping this door, uh, either a sheet double door or an armor double door. Just so you have an airlock for now. And yeah, that's basically the starter. Now you want to open the front door and uh, place down this. Three triangles, delete that one. And then you want to do square, triangle, square, triangle, all the way around. And then, you're going to delete all of the squares. Place down triangles on all of these sides. And then you're actually going to delete that one, and the one on the other side. So where the front door is, you're gonna keep that triangle, and you're gonna keep it on the opposite side. On the two other sides, it should be looking like this. Now we can start working on the inner peaks. And now we're going to place down these on all of the sides apart from in front of the doors. Because where the doors are, we're actually going to do ladder hatch, jump up, sort of. Just a nice way to access the inner peaks. If you have ladder hatches already, place them down, otherwise a ladder works. But these are quite important, so try to get a ladder hatch down here as fast as you can. Otherwise people can just get up to your inner peaks right away. And of course, we're gonna do the same thing on this side. Just like that, and then we just uh, 
seal the inner peaks. Now on the opposite side where the ladder hatches are, we're gonna place another two uh, triangle frames. And then just seal the rest. Now we got some inner peaks. Just for stability purposes, we can add some frames here. Same thing on the other side. And the same thing up here. And then you just want to build with half walls all the way around, sort of, like this. Leave this one open. Pretty simple. And then you place down some more doors. And now the inner peaks are done. I'd say this is a pretty defendable base. As a starter base. Not too expensive either. Now we can actually start working on the airlock. Because we don't have an airlock yet. So getting deep down is uh, going to be quite easy. So you're going to place single door frame. Window. I don't feel like I have to say this. I'm just going to... I'm just going to show you. And at the top you just place a frame. I'd recommend making one of these in the beginning. Uh, a ladder hatch. And leave the other one just a ladder so you can reach it. Because ladder hatches do take a lot of gears. And you're gonna need some gears for garage doors eventually. So, may as well save them for the garage doors. And then use the same thing on the other side. Now the base should be looking something like this, so I'm gonna start working on the actual core. As I've said before, this is gonna be an open core, and we're gonna build it on top of here, so... You wanna start off by building half walls all the way around. And then half walls in the inner circle. Then you can just seal that off. Perfect. Then place one ladder hatch next to the triangle ladder hatch. And one on the opposite side. And then the same thing on this side. And then in the middle here we're going to separate the loot rooms. And then just follow these steps. It's pretty simple. This is going to be the exit right above the ladder hatch. That goes right out to the shooting floor. And now we can actually just seal the rest. Just like that. Now we're going to separate the loot rooms. Okay, and uh, this step might be a bit tricky. It's not really. Just try to look what I'm doing. We're going to place half wall, half wall. And then you're going to go up here and uh, try to place this. Just like that. I'm going to show you in a bit exactly what this is. Just do the same thing on the other side. And now we can seal everything apart from the right of these ramps, where we're going to have a ladder hatch. And these are going to be peaks and eventually turret pods. And the turrets will be standing right here, looking into the core. I do recommend upgrading these to metal, since it's a lot easier to see and shoot through. This is honestly like the best feature of the base. These peaks are so good for raid defenses and it's so hard to take control over this core. It's just an amazing base design in my opinion and this is probably the best feature as I said. As you can see now we got a bunch of empty loot rooms so it's time to fill them. The shooting floor is going to be right here on this level. So in case they blow right under the shooting floor we don't want them to access the core as easily. So what we're going to do is add these uh, car ramps. So, 
they can be a bit tricky to add, but they should be looking like this at the lowest stage. When you've done that, you can add a half wall on top, and then that. And there you go, there you got the loot room. This is how I like to do my loot rooms when I play. As you can see, you can fit a lot of storage, and it's quite easy to access. And then just do the same thing on two other loot rooms. We're going to save one of them because we're going to have our workbench there. When you've turned three of these rooms into loot rooms, we're going to do the last one. And here we're going to have our tier 3. You want to place the tier 3 against the wall and then you're free to do whatever you want. But this is what I usually do. And when you're done it could be looking something like this. With the sleek design. Then you can place frames. Wherever you can place frames. And of course, the same thing with doors. Just slap them down wherever you can. What you want to do now is to get up on the roof, and then you want to do the turret pods. Simple like that. And then whenever you can, you're going to place a turret here. And now you may be thinking, oh yeah, if you don't have any electricity, how are you going to do the turrets? Well, this is the electricity room. Just like that. And you're going to have one here as well. Just want to build the same thing you did here on the other side. But before we do that, just slap a half wall here. And place down some doors. It's actually really important to place boxes up here. Just boxes here in general. Place as many as you can, depending on how many beds you're going to need. But yeah, a box here or boxes here is really important during raids. Because if you start losing control over this part, you can just move all of the main loot up here. But as I said before, I want to build the same thing on this side. Now the roof is done. What I like to do at the top here is to uh, uh, place lockers and beds. Just like that you can fit four beds and two lockers. If you only need two beds or one bed, just spam a bunch of boxes here. You're gonna need it. But if you're four people, slap down some small boxes. Or, yeah, <laughs> maybe two small boxes. I'm not quite sure how many you can fit up there. As you can see, the base is looking a little bit strange now, so what we're going to do is start working on the multi-TC so we can slap down the compound. We're going to do two different types of multi-TCs, and we're going to start with the side that doesn't have a triangle here. Three squares out, one triangle, delete the squares, and a half moon back. Then one triangle, one square, and just finish with some triangles. And there you have it. Now you can slap this on. Delete this. And uh, you get yourself your wide gaps. Then you just want to do the same thing on the other side. And when you're done with that, you can start with the other type of uh, wide gap. The other type of wide gap is going to be like this. Two squares, one triangle. One triangle, two squares. I don't feel like I have to say this. I mean, you guys are clever people. Should be looking something like this. And just like that, you got white gaps done. Same thing on the other side. Before we start working on the actual white gaps, we're gonna just make the compound. So, you build one square out and another one. Then you do a ramp, build another square, another one, and another one. I'm just going to hire the volume of the music and you can follow along. And then when you're done you can delete that. Place down some doors, put on some embrasures, and then upgrade this 
so you can see a little bit more. As you can see, it's quite hard to shoot out here, so what I like to do is to place down campfires here. The campfires allow you to get some nicer peaks, just like this. And of course, you don't want all of this to decay, so we're gonna need a TC. I like to connect these like this as well, so you can't just soft side them. And as always, same thing on the other side. If you want to, you can do a gatehouse on this side as well, but when I play solo, I like to do this. It may look a little bit stupid, but trust me, it's quite good. And then you can delete this and use these instead. I actually love these gatehouses, you got some turret pods, and you got some pretty nasty peaks. I saw this in a YouTube video, I'm not quite sure who I saw it by. He made this, which is such a nice addition to a base, because I don't really need 4 gatehouses as a solo. So this works pretty fine, you can open this to look out, and you have a turret only. I also like facing the walls sort of in, so you get sort of like a turret pod out of walls, I guess, like this. It may not help that much, but I feel like it both looks nice and it may help you a little bit. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> now we can start working on the wide gap, so just do one story high on every side. When you've done that, you can start adding a half wall. And after that, you just finish it off with another two frames. Now you should be having something like this. <laughs> the base is looking quite messed up, but that's where we are at the moment. Add some half walls where you have the ladder hatches. Same on the other side. And then you can just start filling out the shooting floor. If you've done it correctly, you should be left with four open squares like this on all of the corners. And that's where we're going to do this. This may look a little bit messed up, so I'm going to take it slow. You want to add triangle here. And then you want to rotate low walls. Trust the process, okay? The reason why we're rotating them is because eventually when you make them metal, you're going to get this. And you don't want that, so having one of them rotated gives you this. So yeah, you could just rotate one of them, or both. Doesn't really matter. I like to have both. And then a floor frame on top. And then you want to repeat this process on all of the four corners. 
Now the base should be looking something like this. And now you can just start filling out the empty spaces with windows. And now just finish the roof. On these sides you can actually do it two ways. You can do this if you want to, so that you can get a nice little angle on heli, or you can do it like this. It's all up to you and yeah, it's all personal preference. Once we're done with that, we can go over here to our jump up from our airlock. And we're going to add a door on the right side and a window on the left one. And that is eventually going to create an airlock. But as you can see, we're missing some things in the shooting floor. Now you want to place a door frame here and a door. And as you can see, there's still a gap here, so we're gonna place a frame. Same thing on this side. And the exact same thing on the opposite side, as always. <laughs> now you can just fill in with frames wherever you can, just for stability. Now it's time to finish off the roof. You can start off with this one. Pretty simple. Now the base is pretty much done, we just have a few more things we have to do, and one of those are to add roofs. We do have one more last thing to build, and that's going to be the wind turbines. I like to place them here, but you can place them wherever you want. Four windmills, two windmills to each battery. And then, that means you can use uh, 18 turrets. I like to have 2 turrets here. And now we're up in 2 turrets. Here we got 3 turrets. 4. And that's all the roof turrets. And now we're up to 6. Then in the compound you will have 7, 8, 9, 10... 11, 12. And now you still got 6 more turrets, and I like to have these in the shooting floor. At least 4 of them. On every side of the wide gaps. Just to secure the wide gaps and the turrets a bit, it's quite good for you to upgrade these the centerpieces of the wide gaps quite early. It may save your ass during an online raid, so I'd really recommend doing that. There's not really too much to showcase now. You do still have two more turrets you can place, 
And I would recommend placing these turrets down here in the bottom peaks where you don't have doors. But it's all up to you where you want to place them. And I usually don't have this many turrets. But you could also place a turret here. If you want to know where everything is supposed to be placed, all deployables, either use the Builder Sanctuary code as I put in the intro, or you can go to the intro and see the base tour. Thank you for watching today's video. I haven't been posting so much lately due to me getting used to a full time job and spending time with my family during the holidays. I've also had a few wipes ruined by hackers, but I do have a solo video recorded which I'll be posting in about a week.